Hi everyone, I'm Jay. Colin, I am. And this is Star Wars Conversations. <laughs> Hey Colin. Hey Jay. How you doing? I'm awesome, dude. Something exciting just happened, right? Wow, man. Breaking around the rim, breaking news. Let's get well let's, into it now. Let's get straight into it. And what's the section called? Around the rim! Special! Okay, so, so this is the news that just came out this evening. Uh, so it's uh, the 9th of November, so it's Thursday evening. And that is that Ryan Johnson is going to be working on an all new Star Wars trilogy separate from the Skywalker saga. And now that there's going to be a new live action TV series confirmed as well. Um, so firstly, and, and, Styles.com put out a statement about this, mm -hmm. but part of that statement that to me stood out was um, Kathleen Kennedy's comments, where yeah. she she mentions um, we all loved working with Ryan on the Last Jedi. Um, he's a creative force, and watching him craft the Last Jedi from start to finish is one of the greatest joys of my career. Ryan will do amazing things with the blank canvas of this new trilogy. So before we go into what that could be. That tells me something really good and gets me really excited for The Last Jedi because Kathleen Kennedy has a huge resume of movies and she's loved working with him and Disney have loved working with him so much and must be so happy with The Last Jedi that they are willing to give him a whole trilogy to work on. That is absolutely awesome. I know. Look, well, I mean, again, I don't know if you watched the extended interview with, with Kathy on... Uh... Star Wars show that they released earlier this week. The one where they um, didn't mention you. Yeah, they didn't. They, well, it wasn't the super extended version. <laughs> you know, it was just the the slightly extended version. But she was gushing about him on that, mm. and and that, she, she was talking is. about. But she was particularly talking about his all his brand new ideas and the new things he's bringing to Star Wars. You know, and they talked about things like the Porgs and the Crystal uh, Wolves and that kind of thing. But you know how she just loves that he comes up with all these new things mm. and i think that's really telling in this you know i know and and it also obviously they were listening to our show last week where we obviously. were talking about exactly yeah. this mm -hmm. what would happen with the new films and that we talked about the fact that you know you can have the saga storyline which follows the, the Skywalker saga. They even mention it on this yes, quote. Yes, here. they do, yeah. <laughs> um, so a direct quote from me, I think that was. And, and she um, does kind of, kind of steal a lot of ideas from this show, doesn't she? Well, I, no, I think it's an inspiration for her. Let's not oh, say okay. steal. Come on, let's no, be a bit kind to her. Fair enough. She's inspired by our passion. <laughs> um but absolutely, this is saying to me. This, I mean, like um, Tom, who actually put the, who broke the news to our Facebook group. Good well old Tom, done, Wells, Tom, what a lovely fella! Well done, our roving reporter out there in the rim. Uh, he he put this has got to be the old Republic, but I honestly don't think it's going to be something we've seen. I think Ryan Johnson they they want to take Ryan's inventiveness and give us a triple Johnson well treat. Well, let's um, have a let's let me read out the uh, the bit from Styles.com first because it actually has a few key things in there. So, read out, okay. Styles.com said Luke Storm is excited to announce that Johnson will create a brand new Styles trilogy, the first of which he is also set to write and direct with longtime collaborator Ram Bergman on board to produce. As writer-director of The Last Jedi, Johnson conceived and realised a powerful film of which Lucasfilm and Disney are immensely proud. In shepherding this new trilogy, which is separate from the episodic Skywalker saga, Johnson will introduce new characters from a corner of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never before explored. This is the very interesting thing that, that points to something completely new in yeah. a way. Um, then it goes on to the quote that I previously... Uh, mentioned from um, Kathleen Kennedy 
And then it ends with, uh, we had the time of our lives collaborating with Lucasfilm and Disney on The Last Jedi. Johnson and Bergman said in a joint statement, Star Wars is the greatest modern mythology and we feel very lucky to have contributed to it. We can't wait to continue with this new series of films. I mean, any interviews that you've seen with uh, Ryan Johnson and, you know, with Kathleen Kennedy and the other um, people at Lucasfilm, there's a real basically really really happy with him and you know obviously when they're promoting any movies you always think okay you know they're gonna put this on for everyone but we've not had any rumors come out of any problems on the last jedi at all and no. everything that's come out of there has been very positive and in this day and age you know it it's very quick that when there's any kind of issues you hear about it as we had with han solo and you know we've had with numerous movies in recent times you know like uh, uh, batman superman just the all these kind of films you always hear about something if it's not right um that's not to say that there's a problem with just league it's just uh, as a example um but um yeah, th this bit is quite interesting, isn't it? What do you make of that then? So, uh, new characters from a corner of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never before explored. What do you think of that then, Colin? Well, I think, I think the exciting thing here is, I mean, this this takes me back to when you first hear something like, uh, you know, you hear the, about the Clone Wars being mentioned in The New Hope. Yeah. And you, and you don't know. So I'm thinking it's going to be something that we've heard mention of, but... Mm -hmm there's not been a book or TV series or comic series set in it. So to be honest, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's, I haven't really had a chance to think about it. Literally, we've just read that this is happening. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I haven't had a chance to rack my brain as to what it could but, be, but what? I'm hoping there will be something that was, you know, that was alluded to in, in one of the films that we can pick out. But never before explored. I mean, you know, things like, let's say, Knights of the Old Republic, as an example, because a lot of people have been calling for that for a long time. And mm. I mean, you know, Lucasfilm are very aware that fans would love to see that. It was explored in video games and in what is now Legends. And the Legends are there for uh, the story groups to pick and choose from. So there is a possibility, because in, in the modern um, canon of Star Wars, that hasn't been explored at all really has it um other than the little bits that you got in the clone wars where uh you know you saw darth bane and so they're hinted to that they existed in the past but we've not really had any exploration of that yeah i mean i guess it's the interpretation of the statement i mean if, if i mean From for me that would it view. would have to say yeah <laughs> it would have to say you know that star wars law has never been uh, before explored in in canon you know what I mean? Mm. For that to be true. I mean, if you just take it on exactly what it's saying there, then to me, if it's been explored before as legends and that, then then, then that wouldn't wouldn't count. But so I mean, so I mean, introduce introduce new characters as well. I mean, really, this could be um, an opportunity for them to start. Do you think it's going to be like a, another? sort of series of movies that are going to go alongside or take over from this uh, Skywalker saga eventually or how do you know I, I don't think it will I think it, this will go again like what we talked about last last week um, very concurrent to the I still think um, the core story that's going to finish at the end of episode 9 will continue and we will see characters from the Skywalker sagas, it's cool. But, but then at the same time, <laughs> this is going to be a new trilogy. So do you think we're going to have the Skywalker saga, this trilogy, and a Star Wars story movies now? So yeah, that, because that I... So you coming into having three sets of movies? Well, yeah, but I, I don't think this... Potentially, this trilogy might not be branded separately. I mean, again, it goes back to the Skywalker saga are the numbered episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. So you can still have a trilogy that's a Star Wars story, or which is not numbered. You know, mm. it won't be episode one, two. You know, it won't be one of the episodes. It might have a number on it. It might be Star Wars Knights of Yeah, so, Blue, so Blue made, Moon, like, like episode had, one, uh, like with books, the old books, like Star Wars: yeah, so The Empire, well, Star Wars, again, blah blah blah. Exactly like we mm. said last mm -hmm. week, Legacy of the Force. Yeah. Um, you know. 
the the new Jedi Order, whatever it, yeah, you know, <laughs> it could or be all encompassed under one title. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think it's going to be. It's going to be a trilogy. It's going to be. I mean, let's face it. They got the idea from us last week. Definitely, they are going to. Do, they're going to do a series of films with under a banner. Yeah, which is what we said last week. It's very exciting news, and <laughs> and it, it, it it's definitely going to up my stress levels because. I'm always stressed when I'm trying to get tickets for Star Wars. Now I've got another set of movies I'm going to have to stress about. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think there'll be plenty of tickets, mate. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but then <coughs> also that what came along with this as well um, came through Variety and uh, Disney um, CEO Bob Iger revealed that um, they are going to be doing a new live-action Star Wars TV series, which is going to be airing on the new Disney um, streaming services coming out at the end of 2019. This was something that everyone expected. As soon as this streaming service was announced, it's like, oh, they're going to have Star Wars TV series on there. Um, whether Star or not Wars it's going to be the... Um, <laughs> yeah, and whether it's going to be uh, the, the Star Wars Underworld, which um, George Lucas has said, you know, he had completed writing like 50 episodes for that um so no <laughs> so whether it's going to be that because as far as i understand disney had those you know um it could be those maybe slightly reworked or whatever um or maybe it's going to be something completely new maybe that will be knights of the old republic because knights of the old republic could work well as a tv show yeah i mean i would love to see uh the tv series be um just like those um well, I know if it's live action, it won't be just like this. But you know, like the um, cut scenes from all the old Republic. Mm. I love all those videos. Mm. They're so brilliant. Oh yeah, they're amazing. So yeah, I'd love to see that. I mean, I'd rather see that to be honest, because I know that I'd be able to do it on a better budget. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather see a CGI cartoon to be honest. But well, I'm sure that at some point we'll get that. Well, I hope so because I don't really like the CGI they use on Rebels, and I would like to see, oh, as well, you say, it's... ones that look like those. Like a game it would be, <laughs> but they, those cutscenes—they look amazing. You know, they look realistic. Yeah, and yeah, that would be fantastic. So, I'll tell you what, I would also like to see maybe. You know, well, again, we'll see what it's like next week. But you know, just judging from what they do with the. Battlefront 2 single storyline. I'd mm. love to see that as a TV series or something like that. Yeah. Well, hey, the, the main character, um, you know, she looks exactly like the actress that, that they uh, mo capped. So, like a um, player. Yeah, she could very easily do that. We'd have to see what happens to her in the game. Like, if she's still around. Or... Well, there's a hint, there's a massive hint on the download. Oh, is there? Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a minute, mate. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's really cool, man. It's like, great news for Star Wars fans. Hey, like, it's like a little uh, early Christmas gift. It is. Star Wars is just a gift. It doesn't stop giving. And, you know, well done to Ryan Johnson. And um, right. and also, now, now I'm really excited for The Last Jedi. See, see what he's done that made them so happy that they were I can't, doing this. I'm surprised they announced this before the film came out. Yeah. Well, no. I'm not because <laughs> because it's it, as I said it's made me very excited. To see, so now they're like, "Hey, this guy's so good, you're going to love this movie," and everyone's like, "Damn, I can't wait!" Let's just say everyone does, hype, right? <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine you go there like, "Dude, that sucked," um, because I know he's supposedly taken some. Uh, uh, different routes with some of the characters, you know, like Mark Hamill was like, I, I would not have done this with Luke, you know, mm. but but at, after all, he, he's down with it. So, um, you know, he's supposedly gone in very different directions with some of the characters. I wonder how uh, we as fans are going to feel as, about that when we uh, see it in reality. And um, by the way, it's not very long to go. It's just over a month now. I think it's what's thirty-seven days or something like that. Is it? Is that right? Yeah. Well, we get it on the. We're watching it on the fourteenth, aren't we? Yeah, midnight fourteenth. Yeah, man. Oh, not oh, too far now. It's getting no. exciting. This has got me really hyped for it. Just seeing this bit of news, and uh, same as you. I mean, we we've read this literally as we started recording, so mm. I've not had time to really think about it. But 
that's damn exciting. Um, okay, you got anything more to add to that, or should we crack on? No, but I would like any listeners to send what they think it's going to be, and uh, we can talk about it next week. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, leave a comment on the uh, Facebook group, Star Wars Conversations, or you can leave a comment underneath the YouTube video, or probably on any of the uh, podcast feeds if there's a comment section on them. You can do it there too. Um, I don't think there is, but you can still send us a tweet or yeah, or tweet us Star Wars at Star Wars Um Yeah, so the other um, bit of news um, that came out this week um, that most people have seen going around is uh, that Disney and Fox were in talks because Fox are moving away from uh, uh, the more entertainment side of their business and focus more on news and sports and that type of stuff. So. Um, the talks at the moment are reported as dead, which just means they've stopped talking. It doesn't mean that they won't start again. Um, and, uh, you know, Fox are obviously in talks with numerous other companies. Um, Disney, Warner Brothers and uh, Universal are the sort of biggest companies in Hollywood. And um, what that would mean uh, is that, firstly, that fanfare at the beginning, you see it disappear <laughs> for like, from all movies, um, if they got bought. Um, secondly, for Star Wars, uh, Fox still have the distribution rights on um, on the New Hope, mm. so Disney would really want that. And uh, there was yeah. there was stuff being said about oh, you know, Disney would also want to buy all the Marvel rights back, but they didn't. They wouldn't have to if um, if Fox got sold. It, the Marvel character rights would go straight back to Disney because Disney owned Marvel and they were leased. It's like a very expensive lease. They don't actually own the rights to them. Um, but, but with Star Wars, that would be quite interesting because obviously box sets, you know, like um, when they put out, put out a box set of all the movies when the, the main saga's finished, you want to have uh, a new hope in there. Of course right? you do. Um, Although I still go for the uh, uh, revisited version because um, that's the version <laughs> I like and I don't want the stupid version. Um, and so, yeah, but, but still, if you were going to buy a box set on Blu-ray or whatever, you'd want to have the complete set there. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing for us. Um, but they, but they, they already are... I mean, they've not had a problem doing that before, so why would that be, be a problem? It's, it's like cause, um, Disney all want to have all the rights to distribution and I don't think that they have put it out since Disney have owned it have they I don't think the new hope has been out since Disney have owned it haven't it I don't think so oh yeah it's got a big 20th century fox logo on it yeah, yeah you're right <laughs> so um, so yeah so that, you know that's something that that would be good from that I think it's uh, inevitable that fox are going to now if, if these discussions have started and they've already pointed out the direction they're looking to go in, they are going to be sold somewhere along the lines, um, whether it's oh. Disney or not. Disney can't buy their television side of things because Disney own ABC. Mm -hmm. But all the Fox movies, if they did manage to acquire them, would be great for Disney's uh, streaming service because, mm. you know, then you go on there and you're going to have all of the Fox library as well as all of the Disney library, well, it's Touchstone all, it's, Pictures, all that kind of stuff. It's been know. announced that the Marvel Netflix series are definitely going on so Disney. They are, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. So I don't um, know how that's going to work for us in the UK. But it also means that if um, Disney did buy uh, Fox, they would get Sky TV and stuff like that as well. So... You know, there's quite a lot to be had there. But I don't know how the Disney thing's going to work for us because uh, if you take Star Trek Discovery, for example, in the US, it's on Netflix. that's on CBS, but we get on Netflix, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure that Disney's a big enough company and they'll probably put their streaming service out here as well. And then they'll be paying for that too, which is going to kind of suck. But, you know, I ain't gonna I'm going to have for it. to. I'll have to, man. I want, the, I want all those Star Wars TV shows and stuff. Okay, <laughs> Disney. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, what do you think of that, man? Disney possibly buying Fox and Star Wars New Hope coming back to going back well, home, as it were. I mean, I, I'm, I am twigged that they didn't have the rights to release the films in the first place. And what it does say to me straight off is, as soon as they get the rights to release those bad boys, we're getting Blu-rays mm -hmm. coming out of our bloody ears. Oh, yeah. Um, be, I reckon they'll release the uh, original version as well. Um, they... 
I don't know that they will, because George Lucas never wanted it to be re-released. And I don't think they will. I think that's part of his clause, that that's it, done. I think they will. Mm, I, I don't think they will. That's the other big bit of news that was going on. Um, and you had something to talk about Battlefront, right? Oh, yeah, man. I definitely have got some Battlefront news up my hairy sleeve. Um, I'm wearing a wiki onesie, by the way, at the moment, for listeners. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yes, a couple of things. First of all, there has been so much gameplay being put out at the moment, showing all the different maps and people playing it. All these people have had early access to it, either through EA access or just generally those lucky YouTubers that have been given access to it early. Um, the game looks phenomenal. It looks amazing. <clears throat> the the actual um, maps and that look brilliant. I've watched a load of Yarvin gameplay. That looked wicked. I've watched a load of uh, Tatooine uh, and people driving around in Luke's... Uh, um, land speeder. I've watched some of the Hoff stuff with people on Torn Torns, and both sides can ride Torn Torns as well. So I, I haven't seen the Hoff stuff. But does it not just look exactly like the Hoff stuff on the first game? No, it's a different map. Ah, okay. Uh, and um, obviously that you can ride Torn Torns, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, which is cool. Um, and I think there's different objectives. I think for each each of the Galaxy Assault mode there's slightly different objectives right um yeah uh what else i watched a load of camino that looked wicked a load of kashyyyk kashyyyk looks amazing uh watched a good bit of gameplay from star wars hq where um <clears throat> they went through the, the the downed republic cruiser mm-hmm. oh yeah uh, and they flew through it but you also could see some gameplay in it as well did that look cool when they flew through it yeah so um, that that wasn't very enthusiastic, so. Colin. Huh? That wasn't very enthusiastic. What? I said, did it look cool when they flew through it? And you went, yeah. Yeah, it looked wicked. <laughs> I'm going to say, it looked cool. I'm just telling you it looked cool. Um, but the main news that's been come out today, one um, is that... On the 13th of December, they've announced what the first uh, DLC content is going to be. Okay. It's actually a four-week program um, where on the first week it's called Season 1 Begins and basically you choose whether you're going to go on the light path or the dark. So you decide which faction you want to join, whether it's Resistance or the First Order. Is this a a multiplayer um... Thing or, or I'm system. explaining it to you now, man. Just listen. I'll well, hurry Just up. Take you through the, I'll take you through the story. So basically, when you choose your side, then for the rest of the four weeks, you're earning points for that side. And then at the end of it, there'll be a prize for whichever side wins. And if you're on that side that wins, you get extra content and stuff like that. Okay. That's pretty cool. So is that so, multiplayer? Like, huh? Is that multiplayer then? Whatever you're playing, yeah. Whatever you're playing. Because you're earning points. Okay. So that's just one part of it. Um, and they, each weekend they've got a different um, challenge going on. They're going to have different daily challenges. On week two, so on the 12th, sorry, the 13th of the 12th, is when you actually get the, um, the three bits. So you're going to get Finn and Phasma heroes and villains. You're going to get the crate map. You're going to get um, Starfighter Assault map on whatever it is, Dakar, what it's called. Dakar? Dakar? Dakar. Um, you're going to get, um, again, more weekly challenges. There's going to be a Galactic Assault Sunday. Um, on week three, it's focusing on Ace Pilots of the New Republic in the First Order. So there'll be challenges and... and, and um, and a Starfighter Assault Sunday. And on week four is a holiday celebration where you'll play your favourite modes. It's the team at DICE delivered special holiday playlists. Which I don't know what that means. But the, the, the really big deal here is not only you getting free download content, so new maps and multiplayer, 
new characters to play with, but also add in an extra bit to the story mode. Mm. So there's a new chapter being added. Okay. Which goes back to this point about what's happening with Jin Erso, because it's actually called Star Wars Battlefront 2 Resurrection. Now, when I first heard this, I, f- I didn't realise it was linked to the story player mode, single player mode. Right. So I thought immediately, oh, maybe they're going to give you access to some of the maps from Battlefront 1 that play on Battlefront mm-hmm. 2. But actually now seeing it's part of a story mode and considering the whole of this theme is around the Resistance and the First Order and the Last Jedi, I'm wondering whether this explains how Iden gets to be in the First Order area, era in that uh, maybe she does die or something happens to her, but she's recloned, maybe. Ah, okay. That's what I think that's my fist of theory for today, is that she she gets cloned and is is brought out young again in the um, First Order era. So the main character from the single-player game, I can't yeah. remember what her name is. Je- Eden, her name? Eden, Eden, yeah. Jess. It's a bit too close to Jin Erso. Mm. It confuses me. <laughs> that's why you said Jin Erso earlier, and I was like, Oh, what? did I say you know, so? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> but, yeah, okay, so well, that could be quite interesting. Yeah, but what that means to me is also, if they do clone her, then that's ripe for stories ongoing as well. She can then be part of the ongoing storyline of being the films and stuff. Yeah, 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 that's true, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff coming out. It's nice that the um, DLC is going to be free as well. I like that. Yeah, man. The first se- celebrate the release of Star Wars The Last Jedi with the first season of content events and more Star Wars Battlefront 2. Battle as Finn or Captain Phasma on the mineral world craft will take to space as you engage in intense space action ab- above the planet the car. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and also, there, I saw a clip earlier of um, someone flying in Kylo Ren's ship. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, that was devastating! The, the, the that. tie silencer. Yeah, it was wicked. He was really ripping it up. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite powerful, was it? Yeah. So also, big thanks to Tom, Tom Wells, who we mentioned earlier on, because he has got early access via this EA access thing, mm-hmm. and he's been playing it, and he uploaded it onto Twitch and put a link on our group. So yes. You can watch him play. He played on. He did a good go on a few different maps. Showed some things that I hadn't seen before. The heroes and villains fight scenes are meant to be really good. Apparently, it's really good to play heroes versus villains. Cool, and that's right there on Star Wars Conversation Group on Facebook. If anyone wants to go and check it out, yeah, you'll need to join, but you should anyway. Yeah. So, um, is that it then? Is that for our uh, around the rim complete yeah. this week? So, yeah. Yeah. In that case, um, I guess we've got a Rebels Reviews! And that is a loaf wolf howl at the end there for you. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Doom. Yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> Rebels. This Rebels. 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 So these were what episodes six and seven, weren't they? I don't know what numbers it is. Now. Yeah, they all blend. So, um, so the first one started out. <coughs> we got, um, Governor Price turns up on Lothal. She's wearing the uh, the Imperial officer helmet and all that kind of stuff with her troops there, and they're hunting down the. Um, uh, what was it? The stolen. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the hyperdrive. Hyperdrive. That Ezra hid but last, they, they in the last episode. And, so uh, they're looking around that bit of desert. And yeah. in the meantime. Well, she calls up um, Old Thrawn and he kind of hints that she's failed him too many times and that he's mm. sending someone to assist her. And that person is. Rubbish bloke. I don't know what his name is. It's Rook. He's a Nogri. Rook. And he's an assassin, and he's he's a novel, isn't he? Yeah. And so Thrawn's bodyguard. Yeah. Um, so that's a big thing in the in the Legends universe. Mm-hmm. Thrawn's bodyguards were key key things. Mm-hmm. It's particularly but, this one. Yeah, but in the new 
canon storyline. I mean, they weren't even mentioned in the full novel, were they? No. But in the um, the, the Edge of the Empire trilogy, that, that um, series of books, this particular one, Rook, was Thrawn's bodyguard, and he actually kills Thrawn. Yeah. Right? Hopefully that isn't going to happen in this. No, I don't think it so, will. So, initially... I was kind of like, okay, yeah, maybe we've got an episode here that I could quite enjoy. So you introduce this new character and big him up and all that, right? Mm, it's he does pointless. nothing. It's pointless because Ezra is the best Jedi in the history of the universe, and so it's pointless having this guy go up against him. And uh, I, I was sitting there just going, that's one of the things I mainly don't like about this. The Rebels never, ever, ever lose. Never. It's like... It, it always comes across to me like the Imperials are on the back foot and these Rebels are like the most powerful beings in the whole of the galaxy ever. So um, so there's a little bit of a thing between uh, Price and uh, Rook where obviously she doesn't want to look like, you know, she's not going to get Ezra and he's got his mission that's been given to him by Thrawn. So he goes after Ezra and they're all dressed up as biker scouts mm-hmm. and... Um, he does nothing. He just fails to catch them. And uh, then um, Price turns up and they just escape. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. And it was just. Um, but Rook puts a little track on. Um, he puts a track on them. Yeah. And so they find. So basically, the our, our favourite band of rebels have got a little camp because they're trying to fix the hype. Well, they're trying to put this hyperdrive into this ship. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you what the most frustrating thing for me is. This story, again, was a two-episoder. Yeah. It could, oh, it could have so easy just be one episode. Oh, yeah. It was just so much... I mean, I think it's an utter joke that they were making a big thing about there being no filler in this. Yeah, right. Because, fair enough, that if you take the story arc, it's not a filler. But they've just basically, every episode, half every other episode is a filler because I extend the story much too long than it needs to be. And just put a bit of crap in between. And again, the way they escaped sucks balls, right? (laughs) With that loaf wolf and they end up on the other side of the planet well, I mean, no, no, I wouldn't say it's. I quite I, like. I hated that. I, I like, like the wolf cause, thing because it's, it's just, just convenient, right? It's like, oh, we're being chased. Don't worry, we'll just end up on the offside planet. There you go, we escaped. Great, yeah. boring. I mean, I didn't get how they went to the other side of the planet. That was weird. Well, they went because it was like, oh man, we've written ourselves into a corner. Don't worry, we'll have this wolf just teleport to the other side of the planet. I hated yeah. it. I hated it, man. Yeah. I sit there watching it, and I started off going this might be all right. And by the end of it, I'm sitting there frustrated that I've just spent 40 odd minutes wasting my evening watching this shit. I mean, let, let's take some positives out okay. of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. With the, what I thought was interesting, and I don't know if I've read too much into it, was the, 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 what are they called? Loaf wolves? Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah. Um, they're almost like sentient beings, which to me isn't surprising because there are so many aliens in Star Wars that don't look typically like a two bipedal alien, uh, human that they could quite easily be sentient things. And they, you know, and I think they should have played that a bit more that they were sentient. They're not just animals. They are actually aware beings because they obviously are. I mean, they're mm. more than just an animal. They're almost like a tribe of, of of people, but obviously wolves. So um, I thought that was quite interesting. And if they'd have played that a bit better and, and explained that a bit better, I think that would have made it a much stronger story, particularly with, you know, going back to some of the Jedi history and what they had on the walls and the, the fact that that probably was an old Jedi temple or something there mm-hmm. and that they could have been Jedis or some reiteration of Jedis potentially or definitely Force users of some kind. Um I think it's bull, bull crap that they did that, that jump. I mean, they didn't need to move them to the other end of the planet, did they? They could just put them in a tunnel that took them out somewhere quite far away. Exactly. Um, so you, I think that was a load of rubbish. Did you see just, about the Loaf Wolf, the main one? And uh, I, I saw something recently where people were saying that it could be the reincarnation of um, uh, Depa Bilabai. You know, um, that's Kanan's master. 
but I don't I don't know why, and I think people are just getting that because it says his name, like his pre Jedi name. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, don't get why that would be the case. Again, they haven't explained why the Wolves have got this infatuation with Kanan. No. Uh, obviously, they have got some. So there's something to come out in the next set couple of episodes with that, I guess. But mm. I mean, I hope that's not the case. I mean. Like I say, there was originally there was rumours that that was going to be a soaker, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, then, I'm so glad they didn't do that. But Filoni said no, it's not. Yeah, uh, I don't. I personally just don't want it to be anyone apart from a force sensitive wolf. That's what I would like it to be. But, but then it just disappeared, <laughs> didn't it? It just like vanished. Yeah, again, that was a load of balls. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're just adding things that, that don't need to be added, and that's just annoying, isn't and, it? And so again, they're adding it at a point in time that's very close now to a new home. Yeah, we don't need anything new in this series. It's we want to finish extremely off... mystical. <laughs> oh, it's rubbish. Um, other good bits, uh, I seem to be moving uh, Sendula and... Um, Sendula? Hera. Hera, yeah. yeah. Hera and Kane and thing, but... Yeah. I, I do... I mean, look... Also, the other thing I'll bring up, and the thing I mentioned to you on Facebook the other day, is the fact that on Forces of Destiny, Hera is alive at yes. the, after the uh, Battle of Endor. Yeah. So that so, blew my mind, survives, because I'm yeah. assuming that Forces of Destiny is canon, I don't know what else yes, it is. Yes, it is, yeah. And so we know now, 100% fact, she survives not only the Battle of Scarif, but the Battle of Yavin, mm-hmm. and also the, the Battle, Battle of Endor. Endor. Yeah. So... That's that's a major thing, and she's one of the only characters I like. But so. also, she is the only one we've seen survive. Yeah, along with Chopper, they Chopper, are the two yeah. that were in Rogue One. Yeah, none of the others were. So it could be good news. Hopefully, Chopper um, gets wiped out before. But, Endor. but it's it's interesting that she's already been separated from them now. Yeah. So I actually don't think them that they're going to see each other again. That's good, my I hope view. not. I hope not. My um, view is now. Chopper and, and Hera are going to obviously be involved in this trying to... They're going to send the fleet, aren't they, to try and uh, free the foul. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I think... Well, not unfortunately. I think... I hope that that effort's not going to work. Yeah, and that's right. What, yeah. And so basically... And I'm, I'm almost 100% certain that Kanan is going to sacrifice himself... As a noble act for freeing or doing something for the foul. Yeah. But that's how he's going to go. And Ezra and possibly with him. Yeah. And, and you know, I was uh, watching, um, I think it was, it was either the John Campier show or his Star Wars Hall Tuesdays, and someone asked him a question about um, about Ezra. And, and he made the point, and they, throughout this show, in the previous seasons, they've hinted at the dark side pulling at Ezra. But in yeah, this yeah. season, they've completely forgotten that. Like, all the Sith Holocaust lost. stuff. Yeah. This season's like, nah, not at all. It hasn't happened once. The well, other thing uh, was, there was that scene uh, with the Trandoshan, right? And I felt bad for the guy, man, because these guys bust into his place. <laughs> and then yeah, he yeah. ends up plumbing to his doom. <laughs> well... Well, look, um, just on your point about Ezra not showing the dark side, I did think there was a couple of slips when he was... Um, I think it was the episode <coughs> with the Force Crystal, with the Kyber Crystal, hmm. when he got a bit zealous, with, overzealous with his fighting and stuff. Right. And I think you saw a little... I mean, I don't know whether it was on purpose or not, but it seemed like he was getting a bit carried away with the anger stuff. But at this point, do you think we're going to see any more of that? I mean, we've just... This, I think, was the mid-season finale now. So well, we're look, going to have a couple of weeks off. Well, like like I was saying, my, my fit, fist of theory for uh, Kanan is that he sacrificed himself. Mm. I think there is going to be a fall of Lafal, and I think that's going to send Ezra over the edge. Right. And I think... Here's what I would do. Let's let's say that I don't think because I don't trust Dave Floney anymore. But what I would do is basically it all goes tits up trying to free the foul, the foal. Ezra goes eggy, goes to goes a bit dark sidey, almost in a in a plot for revenge or to retaliate or to try and think. He tries to do something pretty stupid like take out the whole planet or something, 
and Kanan stops him and sacrifices himself, and they both die. So now, you think that's never going to happen? And Ezra fighting. Oh right, this is what should happen. Is that? This is what I think should happen. Right, yeah. Um, and I'd love that. To, and I think that'd be a perfect. That would be a really good way to end it. That Ezra ends up going off the deep end. Kanan has to stop him. Maybe at the last minute, Ezra gets redeemed, but it's ultimately it's too late and they get blown up. Yeah. The end. Yep. That's how Rebels should finish. Yeah, definitely. And 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 Hera will be. And also that allow. I mean, now we know Hera one hundred percent survives. Well, we mm. need that anyway. Um, Zeb can be her chewy. Yeah. Well, no. Well, what we can say though really is that that they're still a positive. I think that still allows Zeb Hera. Um, what's his face? The robot chopper. Chopper to definitely survive. Probably. Uh, stupid hair. What's her name? Ah, uh, Sabine. Sabine. Uh, I she'll suspect survive. Sab- they will survive, but Sabine will go back to Mandalore. Yeah, she will. Yeah. Yeah, and she'll go to be part of the Mandalorians, and then you'll have Zeb, Hera, and Zeb will basically be her, as you said, Hera's Chewie. Yeah. And then you've got um, Chopper, and then we'll get a load of comics and a TV show about them, <laughs> set between. Um, a new hope uh, between between um, uh, of Endor Jedi and, and uh, the First Order. And yeah, yeah, yeah you you are probably just right about that. Um, do you think Thrawn will make it out of this season? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, he's I mean, going back to a chiss, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I want him to be around. Later be, on. I guarantee he'll be back. And we don't it's, have anything that says how long Chiss lived for, right? So. Well, look, we know there's going to be a Thrawn book too. Yeah. I'd love it to be that he go, at the end of Rebels, he goes to the Chiss, and Thrawn book two is about him coming back mm. and causing, and possibly coming back uh, after the Emperor's dead. Yeah, and have a really good story set between Jedi and Force Awakens, yeah, all right. about Thrawn, Luke dealing with him. Maybe that'd be wicked. Thrawn's new empire, Thrawn's Chiss yeah. empire. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, I yeah. Anyway, these Rebels episodes, as I say... Well, just one last thing to say on it. Go on. The second episode was an absolute waste of time. Yes. The whole episode was trying to take over a tank yeah. with... And you're saying about how Ezra's was the best Jedi in the world. Yeah. Who's outclassed by some arsehole <laughs> Captain Fogface uh-huh. who basically... They don't even try to tie up. I mean, it's just... It it's, just trips over and dies. It's... But not even that. I mean, well, there's that. I mean, look, that's a whole thing on its own. That <laughs> ending was just so weird. It's like yeah. Ezra didn't even kill him. He just fell in the thing, which was yeah. just such a cop-out. But, I mean, the fact that, you know, oh, we've got to subdue this fella. First of all, they're letting him talk all the time. Knock him out, punch him in the face, hold his mouth. Yep. And then, then oh, yeah, keep an eye on him. Just leave him lying on the floor. Then tie him <laughs> up. Then put him in a cupboard. Bumbling. But don't tie him up. You know, it's just, oh, it's such a... It was so, so... Not, I was just like, this episode is not needed. Oh, God, man. And that's, that's yeah. what's making me... I tell you what, that's what's really making me cross, because they are wasting an episode. Every other episode is being wasted. But it does for me it's, as well. I, I sit there watching it, just going, why am I sitting through this? But like, this isn't, why? But again, <laughs> this isn't even from our point of view of, oh, we're not big fans of the show anyway... It's. I'm taking this from a fan of the show. It's like they are doing the fans of the show a disservice. Yeah. Because they're basically just extending the story that doesn't need to be extended, and I think I think it's wrong what they've done. Although I see a lot of people that, that think it's awesome. So. I know, idiots. Yeah. They can. Yeah, I hope they enjoy it, but I, I don't. <laughs> well, when this, you know, when they look back at it and they realise, oh, they've just hyper extended it. 10 minute story you know i was watching it and i sort of thought to myself when this is finished i will never go back and watch rebels i will never re-watch it the thing is, this, this I, is not going to happen i liked the first season and i re-watched the first season before the second season came on yeah because i actually enjoyed the first season a lot i think i did as well actually i really did yeah because it was again as we talked about last week it was simpler hmm and the actual, I liked it because it hinted, you know, 
the bit that got me excited was when you, you see a twitch of like Ezra recognizing Kanan's presence, and then you've got the little um, Obi Wan tinkle noise. Mm. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? A tinkle noise. The when force everyone, tinkle noise. When everyone has a tinkle, everyone feels it in the force. Yeah, a little tinkling <laughs> force noise. Um, force tinkles. Um, so. And and that was just like really cool. It's like yes, I want that as a little. I want that to be my text alert. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the force tinkle, someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think the show's gone downhill, big time. And right now, with it, you know, we know where this um, where this is leading up to story wise. So at this point, it should be like rocketing along. The pace should be fast. They should like. There's no time that I ever feel that the heroes are in any kind of danger or in any pressure or anything like that. So you know that's where they should be now. They should be like, this is going wrong. You know, like they should still be having their little victories that help the rebellion form and and all that kind of stuff and move along. But they themselves should be running out of luck. Well, the only thing that, they, again, they, that didn't work out for them 100% was when Fawn effectively tricked them into one revealing that uh, what's his name was a traitor and that, and almost basically reducing the amount of options for where the rebel base was. Mm. Uh, that was the only time they sort of slipped up. Um, but, I mean, again, if you look over the seasons, you know, we've had Darth Maul in it, we've had Darth Vader in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Darth Vader episode probably was the only episode I felt actually they were at any risk. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with Maul, uh, they weren't at any risk. I mean, with Maul, it was a joke. Yeah. They turned him into an absolute joke, so... Yeah, and the poor the poor <coughs> character gets wiped out in this show of all places. We lose him in this stupid show. Well, again, <clears throat> just playing, again, looking at the Battlefront 2 footage, people play, you know, the Darth Maul character is so savage on that. Yeah. Like, it's such a waste. Yeah. In this, he's an aristocrat. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's an aristocrat. And, and, you know, like, I like Sam Witwer, right? And he does a great Emperor Palpatine and all that. But I think his small impression is awful. And people just, like, suck dick and go, yeah, yeah it's great. But no, it's not. Yeah, I don't think he did a good more. But I still don't know why I didn't bring back Peter Senowitz, what his name is. Yeah, Sarah Fenowitz. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a voice artist. Why don't you just get him to do it? Yeah, and he pretty much uses his own voice <laughs> just to do yeah. it. But, hey, you know, we've Tim, got that. You shot me, balls. <laughs> 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 right, so um, um, what do you give these episodes, dude? Uh, do it as an overall, because really it's one episode. Yeah, well, again, five. I give it uh, five at a push because I like the beginning of the first one yeah I mean I, again if we were going to split it, it I'd, I'd give the first one six and I'd give the second one two yeah um, but so sort of average four or five yeah so there you go I was unimpressed and hopefully now we're coming that's the, uh, the, the so that was the fall finale supposedly so hopefully going into the next part that's going to be that's it you're on the way to the end so hopefully now it's going to get good. It has to. It'd be, it'd be it interesting to. to see if they, they take my lead with what I've suggested, because, uh, I mean, I think that's the only way to salvage the thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm just disappointed in it, Jay, to be honest. Yeah, same. Same, yeah. But, you know, like I, I, I don't go into this wanting the cartoons to suck. I want this to be so good that I can't wait to rewatch it. But yeah. it never makes me feel that way. But there again, there I... have been some episodes. There's been a couple of episodes I really liked. I loved the Wedge Antilles one, you know, where he's a TIE yeah. fighter pilot. I thought that was an awesome episode. And the other one where they were flying near the sun. That was a good mm. episode. These were in uh, last season, you know. I thought they were good. The Darth Vader one, as you said. The early episodes with the uh, Inquisitors, that, they were quite good. Mm. But in recent times, hell well, this no. is This is the thing where... I'm not just annoyed, you know, that, you know, it's a rubbish episode for our Sandy. I, I actually think the episodes are rubbish in if you take it within the, the show standards. Mm. 
I think they, you know, these are not good episodes. Mm. And it's a shame. I heartily agree with you, sir. Mm. Right, so, do you have anything else to add, or are we going to wrap it up now that we're an hour in? <sighs> um, I'll just quickly plug the Chewbacca onesie that I bought from uh, Primark. Okay. Um, I bought one last year, actually. But I bought it well near Christmas, and they hardly had any, and I had to buy one that was probably a bit too small. It was only a medium, and I could squeeze into it, but it was a bit tight and dusty. What do you have now, and, uh, large? I've got an extra large now. Extra large. Um, so I was trying to squeeze into this smaller one, and um, <laughs> I could just about fit in it, but uh, it was definitely uh, painful. <laughs> I had a bit of male camel toe going on. Um, <clears throat> and then... Uh, when I was in Primark the other day, I saw they had a new stock of them in for this year, and um, they had extra large. So I got that bad boy and gave the other one to my lovely wife, and she loves it. Now, not because it looks cool. She reckons it's the warmest thing she's got. Oh, wow. So she loves it. That's so good. So I'm just recommending them, and they're only 20 quid. Cool. 20 quid's not bad. Not bad. And I can, uh, right now, so when, when me and Colin are doing this uh, recording, we have Skype on, so I can see it, and it actually looks really nice, like good quality, man. Yeah, it's all right. I, I, I feel a little bit like Bungle from Rainbow, but... <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah. And the only thing that lets it down is it's got big Star Wars embroidered in it. Yeah, I don't remember Chewie having a tattoo. So it's, so it's like a Chewy tattoo. And also, the difference I did notice is... On the face, uh, my one doesn't have teeth, but oh. last year's model did. Ah, okay. So he's taken the teeth off. Well, he's a bit older, so maybe he's taken his uh, dentures out. Um. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I think that's it for us this week, then. So yeah. let's close this down. Um, you can find us in all the places that we mentioned earlier in the show, such as the Star Wars Conversations group. Twitter by using at Star Wars Convo or hashtag Star Wars Convo. You can get Colin on Twitter at Captain Colin. And you can get me on Twitter at Eagle Eye1933. We're also all over the interwebs on all the podcast type places such as iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, um, numerous other ones. Anywhere that you can find a podcast, you can find us if you search for Star Wars Conversations or yep. Star Wars Convo. And mm -hmm. you can also find us on the Taylor Network of Podcasts. Tell them about it, Cole. Okay. Um, it's a place where there's lots of different podcasts all in one feed, including our wonderful podcast, but also includes many other brilliant geek and culture-related ones, like uh, Culture Trapping, No Apologies, Nothing's On, Go Trek Yourself, Gotham by Geek, Double Page Spread, Sunday Comics, um... And loads more. Uh, Spirit of 77, Power of Shift, uh, Magnum Cast. They're all on there. Loads of brilliant ones. What's the best one? Star Wars Conversations. Oh, that's the one. But the second best one's Nothing Gone. I love that. Cool. So there you go. Check us out. And if you don't want to check us out, check out that one. And if you don't want to check that out, check out all the others. Or just, just check, check them it out. out anyway. Just check it out, man. Yeah. Right, so... Oh, oh, one last thing. Go on. We want your 50 greatest moments from Star Wars films. Yeah, we do. We want them. Um, it's we're, This is episode 48. Uh-huh, yeah. So on episode 50, we will be giving the rundown of the top 50 Star Wars greatest moments from the films. Films only. It's got to be a film. Um... You send them us, we'll read them out. That's it. Right, okay. So, get on with that, people, because, you know, you ain't got long. You ain't got long. You've got two weeks, and I need it before, because me and Jay are going to be in the pub reading it. Yes, and we're going to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. So, you definitely want to send us stuff. Right, well, that's it from us. So, until next time. Bunch of chewy.